Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom, where we talk trades a lot. Oh, do we ever. And I have one for you. You're like, well, the trade deadline's over. Yeah, but the regular season's... At the end of the regular season, there's going to be trades. There's lots of trade talk to happen. Uh, we can talk about. And what we're going to talk about today is Carter Hart. That's right. It's come out. I have an article we're going to look at where it's very possible that Philadelphia could be looking at moving Carter Hart. Um, they have a young goaltender named Samuel Arison that's ripping it up in the AHL. He's done well in the NHL. And they fired Chuck Fletcher. They brought in Daniel Briere as interim general manager. From what I understand, they're looking at finding somebody that can work with Daniel Briere. He'll be in there somewhere. And Daniel Brewer was not afraid to use the rebuild word when he did his first interview. In fact, he was pretty clear about it. It sounds like Philadelphia is going for a definite rebuild. Now, why would you trade a 24-year-old Carter Hart if you're going through a rebuild? Well, it could be a twofold. It could be them saying, you know, we have another goaltender here. We need some more assets to get our rebuild. And uh, it could be also be Carter Hart going, you know, I've been really working hard here in Philadelphia. I don't know if I want to be losing for the next three or four years. It can affect him a lot of ways. It can affect him financially. It can affect him in all kinds of different uh, areas. And just career-wise, like, if you're as good as Carter Hart is, and we're going to look at how good Carter Hart is, do you really want to waste another four years of your career? with basically no chance of winning a cup whatsoever. So it's quite possible this could be a mutual agreement. Um, it could be more so that Carter Hart's like, yeah, if it's a rebuild, I think I'd, I'd rather you know try my hand at a good team for a while, just for once. Can we do that for once? That would be great. So I think it's a very good chance that it happens. And we're going to look at an article that suggests that it might. We're going to look at Philadelphia, what they may need, Carter Hart, and about seven teams that, that at very least would be interested in Carter Hart services. I do this right off the top, no editing, one shot, one time. Um, I quickly look over the teams and then I go at it. So if you see any mistakes or whatever the case may be, comment in the comment section if you will. But ain't nobody got time for editing. No, at least I don't anyways. And it's boring. <laughs> much rather talk hockey. I'm also a professional handicapper. That's why I don't have time. So if you like to make lots of money, if you're into that sort of thing, you might want to go to bpalpicks.com where we're up 140 units already this hockey season. Baseball seasons, we're going to crush. We always crush. That's what I should say. Bpal picks. We always crush. All right, let's look at the article. All right, here we go. So the article in question, this one is from Yahoo Sports. I could have picked it up anywhere. Report, Flyers likely to put Goldie Carter Hart on the trade block. Doesn't Unfortunately, when you do Yahoo Sports, they don't have the writer, so I can't promote them. I don't think it's anywhere here, but uh, this was well written, so I thought I would go with it. Um, one, one team's castaway is another team's treasure, and that could very well be the case a few months down the road. Although I wouldn't say he's a castaway. Carter Hart has done well for Philadelphia. They just have kind of did him dirty by not having a defense to work around. The team has been a mess. The organization has been a mess. And that's the other reason why I think that <clears throat> they may consider Carter Hart, among other players, is to just kind of wipe the slate clean and build up a new culture with Tortorella. Um, and maybe, you know, maybe him and Tortorella is even like, I don't know if this is the guy I want as my number one. Uh, Flyers somewhat abruptly fired general manager Chuck Fletcher. I think, <clears throat> like, people talked about the timing of Chuck Fletcher's firing that it could have happened earlier and all of these sort of things. I'm not so sure that Chuck Fletcher was uh, really the one 
moving all the parts here, uh, e even in the trade market. I think it was Briere kind of behind the scenes the whole time. And I think Daniel Briere was kind of preparing his life for being a general manager. And they finally got to the point where it's like, okay, we got to stop the charade. Chuck, you're gone. Danny, you're in. And uh, that's how it went from there. So that's where the timing came from. <clears throat> like I said, I don't think Chuck Fletcher was doing all that much behind this, really, anyways. Uh, speculation is how the former NHLer would operate as long as he's in charge while squash quite quickly out over the weekend. I don't think this is a quick fix, Breer said. That's my belief, and that's why I'm not afraid to use the word rebuild. There you go. Not afraid to use it. Rebuild. So what happens in a rebuild? Players that were there before. I mean, look at Chicago. They traded some young players away. Uh, are probably going to be traded, especially if they've been there a while. Rebuild means taking down the old, bringing in new. So Carter Hart, even though he's only 24 years old, and we'll look at that, is still the old here. Uh, he's been there. He's been through the losing. There's a losing culture that can happen with players that have been with an organization for a fair amount of time. And uh, they may want to just wash that. Um, now, Monday on Sportsnet NHL insider Elliot Friedman and co-host Jeff Merrick opened up the episode by breaking down a crazy weekend for the Flyers and looking ahead for the future. Friedman, who is probably one of the most well-known insiders out there, says, I think you're bang on with Carter Hart. You talked about him Saturday night, talking about Merrick. I think he's going to be available. Pretty plain and simple. Like, didn't even <laughs> uh, go, it didn't say, like, I think he could possibly, you know, it's, he thinks very strongly that he's going to be available. <clears throat> uh, with very confident starting goaltending so scarce around the league right now which we're going to look at uh, they it, it would seem a little odd and risky to part parting with a quality homegrown netminder is generally proven as an NHL starter however it's likely a timeline thing in the situation where Hart likely just won't fit in the team's long-term plan that's the way they're doing it. Uh, I also think that Carter Hart himself would probably be, you know, fairly satisfied with moving on from a losing culture as well. And I think this is very likely to happen. Uh, the market out there for number one goaltenders, they can probably get a pick, a prospect. Uh, and uh, like I'm talking about a number one pick, like three good assets for Carter Hart out there right now, especially for a team that, Goaltending is the issue possibly in the playoffs. You could see it even more, although I'm not going to get into that too much here with these teams that are looking at it. So let's look at Philadelphia Flyers, uh, the Philadelphia Flyers. And first thing that comes to mind to me is they're a rebuilding team with only one draft pick in the first two rounds of, the, of, of what is supposed to be a very deep draft in 2023. So... I could see this move happening around the draft, just before the draft or at the draft, so they can collect more 2023 first. They do have two in 2024. Um, I, and I think that would be possibly their number one goal. Also, Philadelphia fans, Philadelphia in general, it, they are not very patient. I'm pretty sure they're not looking to be like an eight, nine year rebuild here. They're looking at three, four years down the road. So I wouldn't be surprised if they look for some young players that are either in the organ already playing in the NHL or very close to playing in the NHL to be able to play in this lineup. Uh, where would that be? One thing, we don't know what's going on with Couturier here. Uh, <clears throat> when he'll be back, if he'll be back. I mean, four months, it says. What he's going to be when he comes back. So I would say the center position is something that they would be highlighting quite a bit. They don't have bad wingers, but even wingers would be fine. Defensemen, actually it's a little crowded on defense, but I think that may change because I could see Ivan Provorov moving on. Um, possibly 
Now, D'Angelo, although I know Tortorella is a big fan of him, so possibly not. Um, but like I said, you got Samuel Erson, who put up some pretty good numbers on a bad team. He's only who's 23 years old. And uh, they could go get a veteran goaltender like Talbot or something like that to help the kid out and move on for Carter Hart, from Carter Hart and bring in some much-needed assets for a rebuild. And that's where I think Philadelphia is basically going to be looking. Um, let's look at Carter Hart himself. Carter Hart, of course, was drafted in the second round by Philadelphia, 48th overall in 2016. Overall, his, he, he's got all the talent in the world. Everybody knows that. When he's on, he's very, very good. When he's not on, he's not that great. But it's really hard to judge. Is it because uh, like 2020, 21, 21, 22, he didn't put up great numbers, but they didn't have the greatest team. This year, his 0 .906 and 2.96, I would say is actually pretty good for uh, a, a goaltender that is playing behind a team that is just not there. It's like practically an AHL team. Um, put in a good organization, I don't think it's unreasonable to think that he could be around a, two, a 915 to 920 and a 2.4. Um, up in one of the upper echelon number one goaltenders in the league. And he's only 24 years old. So he hasn't even hit his peak yet which for goaltenders is around 27, 28. Um, people are going to be thirsty for him, no doubt about that. There's going to be teams out there that will be all over this, and the phones will be ringing for sure for somebody like Carter Hart. Big boy, too. A big goaltender. 6'2", 181. Could use to gain a little weight, but he seems to do fine with it. He's got wonderful reflexes. Uh when his head's straight, he's perfect pretty much uh, as a number one goaltender. He'd be a perfect fit for a number one goaltender. So, with that in mind, uh, taking the uh, – and oh, yeah, bye. We got – cap hits only $3 million from now and next year, which is wonderful for most teams out there, and they can worry about giving him another contract after that. In which case, he would still be a restricted free agent, not an unrestricted free agent. So you even have cost control. Great asset to get assets. All right. So let's look at our first team that may be interested in Carter Hart. The Seattle Kraken. And I put this as the lowest likely team, Mostly because they already have Philip Grubauer at six million dollars a year until 2027. But the thing is, Philip Grubauer really hasn't panned out. I don't think as much as they thought they would so far in his uh, tenure in Seattle. And honestly, I never really thought he would. I was never a really huge fan of him, especially for that type of a long-term contract. But th his numbers. On a team that isn't all that bad defensively, the analytics wise, their shot suppression is pretty good. 3.04 and a 0.892 is not wonderful. And it would seem that Seattle is not really looking to do what most expansion teams do and just tank, tank, tank and pick up draft picks. Uh, they've picked up they've picked up some very good players to become competitive right away, and they're competitive right now. They're probably going to make, make it into the playoffs this year. So in the future, I still think they would like to have better goaltending. They also have Martin Jones, who started out okay. Uh, mostly they outscored his poor goaltending, though. He's got poor numbers. He's had poor numbers for a long time. He's a UFA, so they don't need to sign him. He's making $2 million a year. Carter Hart's making $3 million for the next two years. So he's making expensive backup money. But could wrestle, at least go 50-50 with Grubauer, probably wrestle the number one spot away. And by the time, that would be like 2005, 2006. By the time he needs a new contract, Grubauer won't have much left on his contract. You may be able to buy him out. 
maybe he has some better years and somebody is interested out there. You can retain, send them somewhere else. There would be options here. You would have a fairly expensive goaltending tandem, but for a team that really is relying a lot on depth to win, getting stronger goaltending to me would be a very good thing to do. Um, <clears throat> having two kind of number one-ish goaltenders that you can put in there all the time can bail out a team that sometimes breaks down defensively um, and is is not reliable scoring wise. They've got they're a good team. They are definitely I would say just above average team, but it would go a long ways to have a goaltender like Carter Hart. Also, he's only twenty four, so he fits in well with the age group here. Now the the uh, main reason actually that I don't have Seattle in here is their assets. They would have a difficult time getting the assets to make this trade. Uh, they have $20 million in cap space next year, so cap space wouldn't really be a problem. Some of these players don't need to be signed and can be replaced by cheaper players. So besides Vince Dunn, who's going to get probably a sizable contract, he's having a wonderful year. But overall, I think they could afford to do this without much uh, without much strain on the cap. So, honestly, it would take the 2023 first, right off the get-go. Um, and that, as I said, is something that Philadelphia would be looking for. I don't think that's all they would have to give up, though. And that's where the problem lies here a little bit, because... Um, looking, a lo they, they haven't been in the league very long, so they haven't built up all that much of a prospect pool. Um, I could only think of maybe sending Chris Drigger back. That was the other thing. He's three and a half million. And he's in the minors right now. Philadelphia could give him a good shot. That would also make some cap work a little bit. Um, so that would be the goaltender going back. I don't think they want Jones. And then you'd probably look at a really good prospect like uh, Jagger Furcus or something like that that they drafted 35th overall in 2022. I don't know how much Philadelphia is going to like him, but he's putting up some pretty good numbers in junior. 76 points in 61 games this year. He's got a lot of upside. Uh, not the biggest guy in the world, and I think Philadelphia is looking for big players. But that... Maybe Ty Nelson, he's having an excellent year in college. Um, that might be something that they could look at. Or, and I've heard this before, and I don't know if this would work, but it may just be as much as, forget about the first round pick, maybe they just send Shane Wright. I know I have people in Seattle are like, no way, we're not trading Shane Wright, or whatever the case may be. From what I understand... Uh, they're not really all that enamored with Shane, Shane Wright behind closed doors. Um, it would be interesting what he would do with a guy like Tortorella. And if they aren't, that possibly just alone could do it and they keep their first in 2023. Um, he's having a pretty good year in junior since he's been back in junior, which he should as a 19-year-old who was picked as high as he was in the draft. Um but besides that, it would be something like that. Furcus, uh, Drigger, who they really don't need, so it's not that big of a deal. The first-round pick, I don't even know if all that's going to do it when we look at some other teams down as we go, as we keep on going here, that might have more bullets in their gun to get this done. But it's an interesting idea. Carter Hart is from uh, Alberta, which isn't too far away. It's a little closer to home. And like I said, to me, I don't think Grubauer takes you to where you need to go. Simple as that. So there's nothing in the, there's not much in the cupboard coming up for goaltenders as well. As like I said, they haven't had much time to draft and develop too many goaltenders. It's worth a shot. What is Nicholas Coco? Let me take a look at that. Yeah, he's 
playing in Finland, he's got okay numbers, but nothing spectacular. So something I would look at. Tell me what you think, Seattle fans. If you're on Facebook, Perlo Wisdom is NHL. NHL Perlo Wisdom. Go subscribe to my channel. Comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think about that, my friends. Next, Carolina Hurricanes. Two reasons why Carolina is lower here. First reason being that they are within the division. I just have a feeling that Philadelphia does not want to send Carter Hart within their division. Um, it's just, why make your division, division stronger? When you're talking about goaltenders, you are certainly doing that. The other thing being that they have Pyotr Kachetkov already, and he's doing very, very well. Thing is, you need two goaltenders. Frederick Anderson is injured all the time, as is. as I mean, we knew that when they picked him up. They always are. Antti Ranta and Frederick Anderson are injury problems all day. Both of them are 2023 UFAs. So, enter the possibility of bringing in Carter Hart, where Kochetkov and Carter Hart can fight over the number one spot. You have two years with Carter Hart at $3.3 million to fight it out with Kachetkov. Whoever wins it, you can trade the other one, right? And I've said it over and over again with Carolina. If they, they stop messing around with the goaltender, you've got to have a number one goaltender. I, I, they, they are an analytics-based team, and I love them for that. They're fantastic that way. Great possession numbers, great expected goals for, expected goals against, everything. Wonderful. Now, they sometimes those expected goals for, they have problems putting them in, and we can look at that in a different time. But um, the fact of the matter is, when... If we go into the playoffs here and goaltending lets them down again, which I think it let them down mostly last time, uh, they, I would think that they would be looking to, to upgrade the goaltending position. Here's another thing. You say we need scoring. Here, when you have goaltending that you, when a team has goaltending that they don't feel like they can rely on 100%, they tighten up on the stick quite a bit. It's more pressure to score when you're not sure that the goaltender is going to be able to save. And I'm sorry, but Anderson's 2.38 and a .904, 2.38 goals against average is great, but a .904 save percentage with a behind one of, if not the best defenses in the league is not satisfactory at $4.5 million a year. It's not. Um, I said the same about Nedeljkovic when they traded him away. Everybody was like, I can't believe we only got a third. He was propped up by a great defense. And Carolina can do that. It can make a very average or below average goaltender look like he's absolutely amazing. Imagine what he could do. they could do with a borderline elite. I'll say borderline with, with Hart. I think he could be, very, could be elite goaltender in your system. Fighting it out with Pyotr Kachetkov to be a number one goaltender. Now, what would you have to give back? Um, like I said, they're going to be looking for players that are kind of ready to play right now. Picks, all of those sort of things. First round, a first round pick for sure that I don't believe they have. Do they have the 2023 first? They do. The 2023 first would be gone. Pretty much know that about that. That's the first thing that they're going to want is the 2023 first. Um, you could send back Anderson to make the cap work if he's willing to go because he's got a no trade clause. I think actually <clears throat> now you'd be it'd be the rights to Anderson anyways because he's a UFA. That's not going to really get you very far as far as assets are concerned that are worthy of the pick. You can just let Anderson go. So you, in this case, there's not really a goaltender that is going to go back because you're not sending Kachekov back. No. You, if you're going to do this, you're going to have two goaltenders. One of them's going to beat out the other, and you'll trade them away. You'd have to look down in the prospect pool. 
Uh, you have Drury. They need a center. Drury looks like he's going to be a third-line center and not much more than that. He's not really putting up huge numbers in the minors right now, um, that being Jack Drury. He's not putting huge numbers up in the minors. Uh, 24 points in 37 games as a, what, 23-year-old? It's not that great. He's a very good defensive center, and I think Philadelphia would probably have interest in him because of that. He's a high-energy guy. Um, but he's not really somebody that Carolina should be too worried about using in a deal like this. And then I think it would also have to be a defenseman like Anthony uh, Honka or go down in the prospect pool. And I think they would be hi highlighting either Nick Nikishin or Scott Morrow. One of those two. Uh, so Nikishin, first round pick. And Jack Drury. As long as they like those guys. For me, I would do it. I would do it. Carter Hart, in the right environment, especially in this environment, could win a Vesna. He could win a Vesna. And I think Carolina should stop trying to play around with their goaltending, get their goaltending set out. And I bet you, if they did have a number one goaltender that they absolutely totally could rely on, and two of them at that, two great young goaltenders that they absolutely totally rely on, I think you'd see their scoring go up way more. Because the team is not going to be thinking defense so much, and they're going to loosen up on their stick knowing that if they happen to miss the net or if they miss an assignment, they can take a little more risk. They got stellar goaltending back there to stop the puck. And that leads to more goals, my friend. Carolina Hurricane fans, comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Subscribe to the channel. If you're on Facebook right now, Perlo's NHL. Just search Perlo, P-E-A-R-L-O, NHL. Subscribe to my channel there because you can't do it on Facebook. I don't know why. They're boob heads. They won't let you do it. You have to actually go to YouTube and do it. Or just comment in the comment section in the Facebook. Uh, group that I place this in. Next, San Jose Sharks. Uh, they, I, Greer has said he's rebuilding. There's no doubt about that. And there's no way, better way to rebuild than to start from the goaltender out. The thing about the San Jose Sharks here is if Philadelphia is looking to... Uh, trade Carter Hart and you know the idea is that Carter Hart is saying that he wouldn't mind moving on so to a contender they don't have to listen to Carter Hart they can say oh, well we're trading you and you just go wherever we tell you to go that's it right that's not a very good way to treat players and for a Philadelphia team that I think is trying to build up their reputation as far as how they treat players so they can get free agents and all of those sort of things like that. Maybe this isn't the best look, but for the, the good thing this would be for Carter Hart is he would for sure be the number one goaltender here. Now, why would San Jose do it? Well, he's a 24 year old goaltender that could possibly be elite. And I don't think San Jose wants to spend the next seven years being rebuilding here. This is not a market that can support a seven-year rebuild. I don't believe so anyways, and I don't think they believe so either. Um, what Mike Greer has done quite a bit is he's brought in youngish type players like Zetterlin that are ready to play right now uh, in the trade for Meyer. He's ready to, they're, he's ready to trade, but they got Alexander Barabanov, who I think they're actually going to resign. Um, and trying to make the pain as, as less as possible. And I think he's going to continue doing that. So one way to do that would be have a great goaltender like Carter Hart come in and help this team uh, be able to put out a system that they can be confident in. And that's the other thing. Even in a rebuilding team, having a good goaltender is extremely important because it's really hard to build a system of defensive play 
and uh, offensive structure as well when you have a goaltender that's not effective. And right now, so far, Kapo Kakinen really has not been that great. They've been giving him shot at shot, shot after shot, and it hasn't been working out. The next problem in this deal would be what goes back? Because there isn't all that much to go back here for San Jose. They don't have too many assets that they would be able to send back. Uh, possibly the 2000, I don't, there's no way they're giving up the 2023 first for Carter Hart, for sure. Uh, possibly the 2024. Because, okay, if you, if you have Carter Hart, you're going to be better next year. No doubt about that. And, if you can get a if you could get a player to the level of Carter Hart with the 2024 first, I think you'd do it. Possibly New Jersey's first, a late first here. And something like Noah Gregor, who who I think just needs a new home. He needs a new home. Somebody like Noah Gregor. Uh, and then looking at their prospect pool, which I, I know is pretty thin, but you're talking about getting Carter Hart, your future goaltender for a very long time, for ever. Uh, I would look towards maybe defensive prospects, uh, maybe Cameron Lund, the late first round draft pick from last year. That gives them like two first round draft picks. Kakinen, who they can work with as a go as a goaltender. And Noah Gregor to play in right now. Something like that. A package like that. And those are a lot of assets to give up for a rebuilding team. But the way I see it is, I don't think any of those, there's a good chance that none of those assets even come close to being as good as Carter Hart. Really good chance of it. So you have a 20, you get your 24 year old future goaltender now. If you could draft him, in 2024, it would take him four or five years, and you don't even know if he's going to be that. You already know that Carter Hart is going to be that. The only thing you have to convince him is, can you? I think you'd have to convince Carter Hart, though, that this team is going to be good soon. He's got two years on a contract, and then after that, he's a restricted free agent, and he doesn't have to sign long-term if he doesn't want to. That could be the trouble in San Jose here with this deal. San Jose Sharks fans, what would you say about having possibly a future elite goaltender in Carter Hart for assets such as that? If you're on Facebook, search Perlo Wisdom NHL. Subscribe to my YouTube channel because they won't let you do it on Facebook for whatever reason. Or just comment in the Facebook page and tell me what you think about that. Next, the Edmonton Oilers. Yes. Okay. So the Edmonton Oilers, I know the Edmonton Oilers fans are like, we can't afford them. We have no cap space and all that sort of thing like that. And I, you know, can't really disagree with you on that. Uh, now we're going to, they're going to be going in the playoffs with Skinner and Jack Campbell. Jack Campbell hasn't worked out worth a crap and he's got a huge contract that they probably wouldn't be able to get rid of. And they got Skinner signed up. Stuart Skinner signed up, who's a Edmonton, Alberta boy. Uh, <clears throat> but he's not a number one goaltender, I'm sorry. He's just not. Uh, 2.2 2,300,000 for the next couple of years. That's probably what he is. He's like a 1B. And he's just simply not going to take you to the promised land. We'll see what happens in the playoffs. But my bet is that the thing that happens in the playoffs is goaltending lets them down. They're just not good enough goaltending-wise. Carter Hart's making $3 million for the next two years, which isn't that much more than Stuart Skinner is making. And this will be in the offseason. And Carter Hart is also an Edmonton boy. Sherwood Park, for that matter. For the, to, the Sherwood Park, actually, but... So you could bring in Stuart Skinner at three million. Him and Jack Campbell. I mean, maybe Jack Campbell comes around or whatever the case may be. I don't know, but I certainly wouldn't be waiting for that. Carter Hart is way better than Stuart Skinner. Way better. 
I believe. Comment in the comment section if you think otherwise. Now, for cap space, because that's going to be the next thing. What do we do here? Well, in the offseason, uh, you, you'll be able to trade players. No problems there. A guy like Kaylor Yamamoto would be somebody that you could throw in here. Uh, you don't have the 2023 pick, which is going to make it difficult. Uh, but what, how much are they going to have for cap space here? Each, only $1 million. <laughs> $2 million in cap space. And Evan Bouchard to sign. You got a whole bunch of guys on your top here that need to be signed. Are you serious? That is all the only cap space. No, okay, sorry. $8 million. $8 million of cap space. Skinner goes back in the deal. So that almost covers the cap space as it is. Yamamoto goes back in the deal, which actually ends up giving you more cap space. And then you got to look at a prospect because, and a good one at that. And that might be what stops this deal, I suppose. But I know they're going to be asking about Holloway. That would be difficult to do. Xavier Bourgeois. I'm not a big fan. If they want him, you could give him, as far as I'm concerned. I would go Xavier Borjo in this deal. Uh, they need centers, Yamamoto and Skinner. Something of that nature. I would be willing to do that. Would you be willing to do that, Edmonton Oilers fans? Carter Hart, man. Comment in the comment section and let me know. I... I I I can't even not I can't even think of not I would probably still give more in this deal because the Oilers are it, now that they have uh, now that they have Matias Ekholm and maybe they can add a little more down the road to me they're in a a borderline elite goaltender away from winning a cup they're not winning a cup with Skinner and Campbell I don't care how much you love Skinner you can okay say whatever you want. You look at Skinner's numbers, they're pretty okay. They're not spectacular. 2.92 and a 0.911. It's okay. He hasn't did it as a number one. He's kind of been, it's been between him and uh, Campbell. You don't think Carter Hart can put up better numbers than that for the Oilers? Maybe you're right. Maybe, maybe I'm undervaluing Skinner. Let me know in the comment section. But I don't see it. I just don't see it. Comment in the comment section. Let me know. Search Perlo NHL if you're on Facebook. Subscribe. And I'd love to talk to you down there because I like doing that sort of thing. Next, Buffalo Sabres. And to me, this is a no-brainer for the Buffalo Sabres. If Carter Hart's available and he's willing to go there, it's a young, I, I'm pretty sure he would be willing to go there. I know you're saying he's a restricted free agent and he doesn't have a say. That's not true. Players do have a say, especially when you only have two years left on your contract. If you're not, if you say, I'm not signing long-term, I'll go there for the two years because you're paying me, but I'm not signing long-term, then that trade ain't happening. Pretty much for sure. But in this case, I think there's a very good chance that he would be interested in this. First thing I think Buffalo Sabres are gonna, fans are going to say is we have Pekka Ukalukanen. Okay, he's not as good as Carter Hart. Sorry, it's not. <laughs> he's just not as good as Carter Hart. Um, I would say Carter Hart is significantly better than Lukanen. I would put Lukanen in this deal, to tell you the honest truth. Um, Comrie, nobody wants Comrie. Don't even mention Comrie there. You're not trading Comrie for him. Uh, Craig Anderson, we'll see if he's back next year. But looking in to start, you got this. Buffalo Sabres are, if they have an elite goaltender next year, I wouldn't call them a contender, contender, but they're getting there. You've got two. Owen Power is probably going to win a Norris. So is Rasmus Dahlin. You have two potential. Norris winners on your team already. And uh, unbelievable stack top six. But somebody has got to go back. 
And I think the I think the Oilers are going to be looking for young young players that are ready. And I think Buffalo could afford to lose Casey Middlestat. Uh, I like him. He's good. He's getting better, for sure. No doubt about that. But with the players that they got coming up now, like Mc, like Picard, uh, Isaac Rosen, um, they have a lot of good prospects coming up already that can take that spot. You can also just sign a free agent to cover it until they're ready. And... There are first and there are 2023 first and middle stat, something like that. I like middle stat. He, they need a center bat in Philadelphia. He's big, he's solid, he's strong. You get the 2023 first in the middle and Lukanen. People are going to say that this is a huge overpay. It all depends on how much you value Carter Hart. I personally think you put Carter Hart in the right situation, Philadelphia. Is not hasn't been the right situation for any goaltender the last three four years. Absolutely abysmal defense. This is a kid that uh, he's a kid that had to grow up to progress in a organization that was an absolute shambles, and he put up some pretty pretty decent numbers and looked sometimes unstoppable doing so. You put him in a, an environment like Buffalo, wow. He is going to be amazing, I believe. And I would give up a package like that for him. I really, really would. All right. Tell me what you think about that, Buffalo Sabres fans. Comment in the comment section. And let me know. Los Angeles Kings. And this is completely dependent on two things. On how Junis Corpusalo does in the playoffs. And I think he could do well. On... If he is willing to sign in L.A., because if he does do really well in the playoffs, he's a free agent next year, and he could outprice himself. Uh, You know, somebody could think of him as a four or five million dollar a year player. They've only got seven million dollars in cap space. Uh, With a few players to sign, they could get it done with Corpus Allo alone. However, Corpus Allo is 28 years old. Carter Hart is 24. And projected to be much better long-term than Corpus Allo is now. Simple as that. Uh, I mentioned it in the, when I was talking about Buffalo. In the better situation in Philadelphia, that his numbers would be probably spectacular. The kid is unbelievably talented. I, lo- I like Corpus Allo. Um, now that he's healthy, he's a pretty decent goaltender. But why not have one that can be completely elite? So, who would go back in this deal? I think you could. I think Copley could go back. You don't really need need Copley. Um, you could, you know, depending on what happens with Jonas Corpus Allo in the playoffs, maybe you can sign him for a little less, and you can have Hart and Corpus Allo. But to me, L.A. is that one elite goaltender away, which might be Corpus Allo. I just doubt it very much. He, he hasn't shown in his career to be that. He's shown to be, like, very good, but not, not absolutely spectacular. What would you give up? You don't have the 2023 first. That's going to be difficult because that would be one of the things that they'd be looking for. But you, they... But you do have, this would be in the offseason. This is assuming Corpus Salo doesn't pan out exactly the way they like. <clears throat> I would say it's time for Gabriel Velarde. He's been good. He's been getting better. He hasn't been everything they want him to. He has had injury problems. He is big. He's something that Philadelphia would be definitely very interested in. And... You've got Kaliev, you've got Jared Dolan Anderson, you've got uh, Fajimo, you've got you know so many players coming up through the system that can take that spot if if uh, able to do so, or sorry, um, can take that spot. So it doesn't hurt so much that you put him in the package. He's going to need a contract as a restricted free agent here, and I think Philadelphia would be able to accommodate that. 
assuming that this deal were to happen. I don't think that's the only player that would have to be involved here. Phoenix Copley and probably a prospect as well. I don't think the team needs Alex Turcotte anymore. He's just not panning out there in the AHL for them. They do need a center in Philadelphia. They can work with him and see if they can get him to be what everybody thought he was going to be when uh, when uh, they drafted him. Um, not to mention, it's less pressure. You know, Moving from a place that drafted you, a bit of a disappointment, you get a whole new fresh start. People don't even think about the fact that you were a, a, a top draft pick at one time, and you can become whatever you're going to become there in that organization. So I could see something like that. Maybe to, Tobias Bjornfort, a uh, good defensive defenseman, or it looks like he could be. Helge Granz, which is a defenseman that I actually thought Philadelphia was going to take when they took Furster in the top round, top around that, or in the first round that year when he was drafted. Um, something like that. A package, something similar to that. Would you be willing to do that for Carter Hart, especially if Corpus Allo kind of shows that he's just a average to above average goaltender for an elite goaltender in L.A.? Um, I know you're going to say, send them, uh, what's his name there? It, it's not going to happen, though. In the minors, Cal Peterson. I, I don't know what it, the poor guy, he just doesn't, can't get her done. I don't know, they might have, LA might have to buy him out. If he were part of the deal, there would have to be a lot more to this deal than that. Possibly they could send it, but now you're talking about sending top end prospects with them. Like really good prospects, guys that you don't want to give up, like Spence, and uh, because they're doing you a favor, taking a five million dollar contract, right? Uh, Spence, Velarde, yeah, yeah, Velarde, Spence, and possibly another piece, and hopefully they can do something with Peterson, but they don't want Peterson. Name nobody want Peterson. LA Kings fans, tell me what you think about that package, such as that. Could be Kaliev. Tell me what you'd be willing to give up for Carter Hart there in the comment section. If you're on Facebook, search Perlo's NHL on YouTube. I'll talk to you. I will talk to you. Next, number one spot the Ottawa Senators. Ottawa Senators, basically, they have Mad Sogard, who's a 22 year old kid, doing the best he can. Looks like he's going to be, could be really good in the future. But they have Anton Forsberg, who really is just an average goaltender at best. Talbot probably will be gone. He hasn't really worked out all that well as well. Why roll the dice with all this? Just get Carter Hart. To me, you put Carter Hart in here with, uh, now that they got Chikrin, Sanderson's a year older next year, Shabbat, Zub, uh, this Top six is amazing. They just team just keeps on getting better and better and better. You've almost got a contender here right now. You don't have to wait any longer. Is it going to cost you? Yes. It may cost you even the Mad Sogard. One of the, maybe something like, I mean, it would be more than that. But it's going to cost you Ridley Gregg. It's going to cost you one really good prospect for sure, especially a player that could be ready soon. So really, Greg, uh, Lassie Thompson, and maybe Anton Forsberg. Something like that. To get an elite goaltender to put you over the top right now. I'm doing it. I'm freaking doing it. Really, Greg? You don't need really, Greg, in this. Look at what you have here already. I mean, really, Greg is awesome. Don't get me wrong. But when jo when Norris comes back, where does he fit? He doesn't really fit bottom six. I think really, Greg, Greg, Greg can be a top six player. And he's a Philadelphia type player. No doubt about that. Is really, Greg going to be good? Are you trading him because he's not good? No. You got to trade things that are good to get good. And Carter Hart is damn good. I think he'll put you over the top. Comment in the comment section, Ottawa Senators fans. Tell me what you do think for a package like that in the offseason to get uh, your, you know, number one goaltender is set. Boom. Bang. Don't have to worry about it anymore. You got your 
uh, top four defense set, top six defense set. Now let's go win a cup, right? NHL Perlos, NHL, P-E-A-R-L-O-S, NHL. Search that in YouTube. You'll find me. And comment in the comment section. In fact, I'll put the link down in the comment section. You can just hit the link to my uh, channel and get in there right away. Um, if you're a Facebook user, though, you'll have to search. You won't be able to subscribe on Facebook, but you can comment there, and I'll talk to you there. All right. That's what we have for Carter Hart. 50 minutes it went, but there was lots to talk about. I had a lot of fun. Hope you did too. Till tomorrow on our next trade video. Here's a little perlo dance for you on your way out. Have a great day, everybody. Okay.